I'd like to introduce you now to Omar, who's come over from the UK. He flew in on an overnight flight and arrived very early this morning. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. You managed to recover from the flight? Just about, just about. Looking forward to the show tonight. Good, great. It's nice to see you here. Tell me a little bit more, please, uh, about your music. Yes, uh, Neo Soul um, is sometimes described as... Um, how, how would you describe your own music? Wow, it's um, it's just a mixture, you know. Um, when they come up with neo soul, I think it's just so you can describe the section where you're going to the shop to buy the music. Um, it's it's a kind of homage to all the old '60s and '70s soul, where music was made by groups of people playing together in one room, um, and. You know, it's the same kind of vibe I'm trying to make when I'm recreating that music, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I play bass, drums and keys. Mm -hmm. um, I like to have orca orchestrations mm -hmm. in there. I like to use brass string sections as well. Yes. Yes. And it's that kind of thing I like to put into the music. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a mixture of the, the jazz, the funk, the soul, the reggae, the Latin, mm -hmm. and a bit of classical, because I was right. classically trained as well. Right, yes, I, I read that you, you did, uh, your, your education was in, in some very good uh, music schools in the UK. Mm -hmm. so, so that had a big influence on the way that you developed your music. Absolutely. I mean, you know, sitting at the back of an orchestra was yeah. uh, it, it was a big influence for me. Right. Um, I was uh, the principal percussionist of the Kent County Youth Orchestra for, right. a, for a time there. So I had a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. We went to Brazil, the mm -hmm. States, Italy, um, and that just had a big effect on the music that I make, you right. know. I like to be sat in within a group of people, mm -hmm. getting a little vibe, you know. Sometimes okay. I'd sit in the studio by myself, but it's also nice to sit with a group of people as well. Right, so the vibe for you is important then, you know. You, as you say, yeah. you, can't just, you can't just sit and create in isolation. You need to have that kind of... Well, uh, you, you, you have to be you have to be experimental you can do the isolated thing mm -hmm. as well but you need to work with other people as well because you just need to get the full full wealth of being able to work in any any condition okay and, and where else do you get your influence from tell us a little bit about influences well um you know when i first started out um stevie wonder was a big influence mm -hmm. for me you know um in terms of his uh, vocal stylings mm -hmm. his arrangements his production mm -hmm. um his instrumentation those are the, all the kind of things that i like to implement in my music as well mm -hmm. Um, but I was also listening to uh, reggae singers like uh, uh, John Holt, mm -hmm. Dennis Brown, Bob Marley, right. um, uh, jazz singers, King Pleasure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and also, you know, being classically trained, I was playing you know, percussion, mm -hmm. um, drums, uh, guitar. I was playing the, the, the euphonium, the tuba right. as well. So I just wanted to get myself immersed in music, basically. And right. that's the kind of thing that's come across into the music now. Mm -hmm. Right, so do, do you believe, do you see that at the moment then that you're actually changing the direction of, of, uh, of a musical genre? Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I, I'm trying, changing the direction, you know. Um, I, I've, been, I've been told that I've influenced quite a few people mm -hmm. within the business. I mean, that, that's quite a flat, flattering thing to hear. Mm -hmm. um, that's not my intention, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I just like to do things my way. Right. Um, after my first single, mm -hmm. after two weeks of it being out, I hated it. Oh, and really? I, did, uh, yeah, I vowed that <laughs> any, any time after that now, any music that I make, mm -hmm. I have to make music which would stand the test of time, mm -hmm. which you can play for, you know, for a long time, like mm -hmm. 20, 30 years after mm -hmm. you've made it. Because when you write these songs, mm -hmm. you've got to keep performing them again, you right. know what I mean? Yeah, and sure. you've, got to, you've got to be into it, because yeah. you're going to be hating that song for the rest of your <laughs> life, you know what I mean? So I just decided to make stuff that would um, be durable. So to stand the test of time, actually that sounds like soul. Right. <laughs> soul stands the test of time, doesn't it? And your influence is there, you know, reggae and, mm -hmm. and, and the soul of the, what would be called the golden age of, uh, of soul in the 70s mm. uh, at that time. Mm. Um, th that, that has quite a heavy kind of effect on, on what it is that you want then. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's about the sounds, it's right. about the vibe, you know what I mean? Rather than what's in the charts now and what's big now, what's selling millions, mm -hmm. it's not about that for me. It's really about just me being happy with what I've created mm -hmm. and knowing that in 5, 10, 15, 15, 20 years time, mm -hmm. I'm going to still be happy doing mm -hmm. it. And to be able to you know, travel the world and people mm -hmm. know my music, I mean, you know, I'm in Kazakhstan, for goodness mm -hmm. sake. I didn't even expect that my music would, would reach out here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was in um, Georgia before, I was in mm -hmm. um, Azerbaijan, Baku before as well. So I've been to places where I would never expect my music to reach, but it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's traveled really well, which is fantastic. Great. I'm very pleased to hear that. Thank and you. I want to wish you best of luck with your concert tonight. Thank, Thank you for you speaking much. to me, Omar. No problem. Thank you.